Hi folks, let's talk a little bit about calendars. Um, calendars, I think, are incredibly interesting things. And especially because in the calendar that you and I follow, it is based almost entirely on astronomy. And because we are not a culture that is, is as in tune with the sun, the moon, and the stars as our ancestors were, people have forgotten a lot of the roots of those calendars. Um, this is a very famous astronomical clock from Prague, Czechoslovakia, and all of the, and you might recognize these are actually ecliptic constellation symbols, and yeah, very, very interesting things. So historically, we humans have cared a lot about the apparent motions of the sun, the moon, and the earth. Where is the sun at different points in time? Why? Why has it been such a big deal for us to plot the positions of the stars? An ancient man cared about this a lot. This, as you may know, is Stonehenge in England, a very famous circle of standing stones attributed to the ancient Druids. Um, Incan temples in South America. And why do we care about the sun and the moon and the stars? Well, agriculture. These ancient temples had something to do with a combination of religion and knowing when to harvest, knowing when to plant. Uh, if you knew exactly when was the right time to plant so you could get the biggest crop out of your garden, that was a big deal and you were considered a wise person in your community. Wrapped around this got a lot of religion. Um, when exactly is Easter? Yeah, it changes all the time. Why and where did it come from? So we'll talk about some of these things and how they relate to calendars. Any religion out there has got holy days, and these holy days are, are days of celebration, and they change from religion to religion. But when these days are, are based on the calendar and they're based on astronomy. So let's talk about Easter. If you ask the normal person on the street what day is Easter, they always have to look it up most of the time because it's just so wacky. Here's what it actually is. Easter is the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring or vernal equinox. And it's always between March 22nd and April 25th. There is a month swing between which a, um, Easter will occur. Now, the Jewish calendar is a lunar calendar. It is based totally on the, the phases of the moon. But the Jewish calendar adds periodic corrections uh, through time in order to keep their feast days in the same season. For example, Hanukkah is the 25th of Kislev. Now, Kislev is a, is a month in the Jewish calendar, and when is Hanukkah? It's always the 25th of Kislev. The challenge is because it is based on the phases of the moon, what day on the, on the public calendar is the 25th of Kislev? That changes all the time. So Hanukkah is not on a, the same exact calendar day from year to year to year. Now to make things even slightly more confusing is the Islamic calendar. In the Islamic calendar, again, it's a lunar calendar where one month is uh, considered one month and the challenge is because a month a month is so much shorter than a normal month that these feast days actually change from year to year to year and one of the most important feasts in the islamic calendar is ramadan ramadan is a month of fasting they fast fast from sun up to sundown well through the years these are when that month of ramadan is going to occur um, in 2017 it was may to june by 2022 it's going to be april through may and by 2027 it's going to be february through march so these feast days change months from year to year to year. Chinese calendar, and many of you have known um, when your Chinese New Year, like what year you were born in. Were you born in the year of the snake, or the pig, or the tiger? Um, the Chinese calendar has the date of the first new moon. So when is Chinese New Year? It's the date of the first new moon, and it's halfway between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. So when is Chinese New Year? It's always between January 21st and February 20th, but it changes, again, because it's based on a lunar calendar. 
the Hindu calendar, instead of having 12 months, they actually break the year up into 27 fortnights. And if you remember, a fortnight is two weeks or 14 days. Well, if you take the darkening of a moon, that takes about 14 days. The lightning of a moon takes about 14 days. And they actually break the cosmos into, instead of 13 or 12 ecliptic constellations, they actually have 27 constellations. And that's how the Hindu calendar actually keeps time. The reason I'm going into all of that is to just hopefully focus in on the, on the idea that keeping track of time and space has always involved astronomy, and it has become very important culturally to us. So what is a year? Okay, let's define a year. Um, a year is the time it takes for the sun to actually return to the same position against its background of stars. Now remember, it is the Earth that is actually moving, not the sun, but when we look at the sun and we see the same exact background of stars that we started from, we call that one solar year. We measure historically the year began in the spring. Um, that's what ancient peoples measured spring to spring, and astronomers do very often as well, vernal equinox to vernal equinox, spring equinox to spring equinox. When we use this definition of one year. A year is not just 365 days. It's 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds. What is this extra crazy time? How do we deal with that? Well, we deal with that with the invention of a leap year. And that leap year, every once every four years, helps us deal with the fact that we keep our solar year and we keep our timekeeping in sync with what is actually happening in the heavens. Now ancient Roman calendars, our calendar came from the ancient Romans, the one that you and I use today. They had 10 months. Um, just like you have 10, 10 fingers and 10 toes, um, the ancient Roman calendar had 10 months. And it's a pretty logical system. They divided it up into 10 parts. New Year's was in the spring because that's when there was a renewal or growth or baby lambs were being born. And most of these were actually based on the months, um, were based on gods, like Martinus was based on Mars, the god of war. And then some of the months actually were named for numbers. Uh, Quintilus is five, Sextilus is six, September seven, October eight, November nine, and December ten. Very logical, made a lot of sense. The challenge is, um, yeah, we don't have 10 months anymore. We actually have 12. So where did we, what happened that we went from 12 months to 12, 10 months to 12? By time Julius Caesar, who was emperor of Rome, came to power, there in about 46 BCE, before the Common Era, or a little over 2,000 years ago, um, the there was a real big need for calendar reform. What occurred on the calendar did not match what was seen in the heavens. And it is really important for us to keep track of time and celestial motion to have these two match. And in order to fix things, Julius Caesar, as emperor, said, okay, we will add leap years. And that is that crazy February 29th. And I'm sure maybe you or somebody you went to school with has a February 29th birthday. So when they are old enough to drink, they're only like 4.1 years old. It's just kind of crazy, but that's how that actually works because they only had four birthdays. Um, and this is almost the cal calendar we're familiar with today. That leap year takes care of the fact or deals with the fact that there's about another extra six hours per year that it takes for the Earth to actually totally and completely orbit the sun. The other thing that happened during the time of Julius Caesar and calendar reform is they decided let's rearrange the calendar and add a couple more months. So they split 
the 10 months. They just kind of split the year in half, and they threw a month in the middle, and they named it for Julius Caesar. And that is the month July. Augustus Caesar, also an incredibly important Roman emperor, they named a month for Augustus Caesar, and hence the month August. So that's how we got from a 10-month calendar to a 12-month calendar. Now, the calendar of ancient Rome worked very, very, very well for 1,500 years or so. But by the 1500s, the calendar was off. Uh, the calendar was, was very, very off. And so by 1582, Pope Gregory, on the advice of his counselors, was said, let's just fix the calendar so that it matches observation. So this matches actually the motion within the heavens. And when Pope Gregory did this, he basically said in 1582 that there would be a Thursday, which would be October 4th, and the very next day would be Friday, October 15th. Well, when that happened, 11 days were skipped. Now, People woke up, went to bed, everything was normal, but seriously, there were riots in the streets because people were convinced they were being kind of done out of 11 days of their life. And no, they were not done out of 11 days of life. This was necessary in order to make the motion in the heavens and the calendar back in sync. In order to fix the situation, so it didn't happen again that the calendar would be so far off, um, they invented the concept of leap centuries. Now, any time there is a century year, meaning 400, 500, 600, the year 1000, the year 2000, if that year was divisible by 400s, it would include a February 29th and it would be a leap year. But if it was a century year, like 1700, 1800, 1900, and it was not cleanly divisible by 400, and you ended up with some sort of a fraction left over, that would not be a leap year, and it would not include a February 29th. That would keep the calendar from running ahead of celestial observations, and this is going to work. I mean, the year 2000 was a leap year. Um, the very next leap century, let's see, well, the next century mark we're going to come to is 2100. Is that equally divisible by 400? No, that's going to leave us a fraction, so that will not include a leap year. The very next one is going to be 2400, and unless you get yourself cryogenically frozen, none of us are going to see this in person, but that will be cleanly divisible by 400, and you will end up with that being a leap century. The ones in between, not so much. The Gregorian calendar, considering the fact it was made in the 1500s, um, is going to be correct for the next 3,000 years. So kudos to the folks back in ancient Rome or 1500s Rome. They were pretty good. That was a pretty good calendar. Here's a little trick that I use to help keep track of the months that have 30 or 31 days in them. Um, if you take your two hands and you put them, make fists out of each hand, and you put your left and your right hand together, if you start on one knuckle and you count, um, knuckle, low point, knuckle, low point, it kind of works out really slick that the knuckles are the 31 day months, and the low points are the less day months. So January, February, March. January is 31, February is a, a small month. March, April, May, June, July. And you can keep your, put your two hands next to each other and you get July is a 31, August is a 31, September, October, November, December. Some people, and I like to do this myself, I like to go across the hand and then back again. So if I go January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, and I just tap this knuckle twice, September, October, November, December. That works as well. It's a little thing that I use all the time and I hope it helps you. All right, that's going to finish our talk about calendars and we're going to come back later and talk about seasons. See you then.